So we're gonna look at the Almond Brothers approach to Story Monday from the Fillmore shows, and we're not gonna do a note for note thing, but we're gonna look at more of the approach of what's going on for both Dwayne and for Dickie Betts, and we're gonna do it for both the rhythm and their lead approaches, so you can kinda of get the overall style of what's going on and apply it to your own playing. So let's check out both rhythm parts right now, give it a listen to me playing with the backing track, and then I'm gonna break down musically what's going on and show you how you can apply it to your own playing. So first off, this tune is in 12-8, and if you don't know what that means, it's basically just has this triplet feel. So it's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. So it's got that feel underneath it all, so you want to be aware of that. And it's a blues in G, but it's definitely not a straight ahead blues where it's just three chords. It's uh, it's more of a jazz blues, it's got, got some movement to it. So it's in G, we're starting off on a G7, and I'm just going to go over the chords and the approaches of, uh, we'll start with Dwayne first as we kind of go along. So we got this G7, you can kind of think of it as a G9 too, we'll get into that in a second. And he's just doing this thing called playing in six. And he's doing it by playing with a pick and his finger. So although you can use just fingers if you wanted to too. And it's called a six just because of the separation from this note to this note. I'm not going to get too into what that is though, beyond that. And he's sliding up down here, and that ends up giving you these two notes that are from the G7 chord. And then for the next one, he's going, going up to here, hammering on, and then sliding it back here, and that's giving you notes from a C9 chord. Right? And then he goes back to the G7, then he does, he goes up to an A flat 7, but he's playing an A flat 9, this little shape. Right here, if I put that thumb on the bass there. Brings it down to a G7, and then goes. And that's just sliding it back up, playing it, adding a note there, playing it up top. And that is something very common, a little musical theme throughout a tune like this, where they're not just playing the chords all the time, but they're sliding up a fret, sliding down, and it creates that tension. But it resolves it, you know? Resolves it there, so very cool thing. And that right here is like going up a fret from the chord it's about to go to. So it's about to go to that, to that C9. And he's going like this, adding a little melody to it, a little movement, and like that. Although I actually I, I tabbed it out like this, which is the same as this. I'm not sure why I did that because you could just you could just do it there. Those three notes. We're adding one more there, but I did this. Slides down, but that's basically playing a C9, just a different place, right? And then hangs on that, got some, got some, uh, has this, that's, that thing again, the sixth. Then we got some movement with the chords, a G7, and he's doing this tremolo picking, just going really fast, really quiet, creates this kind of quiet, dramatic sound. Big thing in the 12-8 uh, blues. Do an A minor 7, B minor 7. B flat minor 7, A minor 7, hangs it, and then he goes, there's that again, movement, just one fret creating tension, going backwards this time, and then a C minor 7, so it's just playing a C minor chord, he is, but overall it sounds like a C minor 7, um, you'll, we'll see from uh, what Dickie Bass is playing, and uh, the bass is also playing an E flat, so people often write it off as like a C minor uh, 7 over E flat. He's just playing a chord like that. And then we've got G7, but he's playing that ninth version again, and then sliding up. 
Got C9. Same thing down there, so those familiar things again, and then a D plus, which is called a D augmented chord. It's like playing a D major, but this note right here, the fifth, is what they call augmented. It's sharp, a sharp five, up one fret. Very common thing in uh, blues, so if you play a lot of blues, you listen to the blues, it should sound very familiar. Augmented chord, and then back, back to that um, G7 and then with the six and things like that. And then he's doing other things, playing little kind of more lead lines and stuff, but it's not like he's clearly playing lead or rhythm. It's very much, they're both kind of in between, which is very cool. And they're very, really listening to each other and just playing very calm response with this kind of rhythm slash lead approach. So with that in mind, let's check out what's going on for Dickie, but let me change guitars for that first. So now with Dickie Betts' approach to the chords and all this rhythm, um, you know, it's very much, again, a calm response in between what Dwayne is doing. And uh, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit thicker in the chords, so he's, you know, a little more of the, uh, the rhythm roll, but still kind of a very melodic lead approach, too. So he's doing this, this G9, and he's just sliding it up. So similar to that it's just got that one more note in there and the timing is different so they're going back and forth so slides that up and then for the C9 same thing you just move it up to that would be C G right so slides it up two frets and then right back down <clears throat> back to the G does the same thing goes up um, they both hit that same thing at least the first time through again I'm, I'm going a lot based on the first time through, which really sets the stage for throughout the uh, the tune, the, the approaches, right? And then we go back to the G9, and then he goes, and that is a G7. So in that G9, and then a couple little hiccups there into this shape here. And this is a very good voice leading. So he's playing this, this note on top, goes down like that. A, just a regular C7, right? And then immediately back to, to that a couple times, and then we've got just playing a regular G triad now, so just sticking to these three strings here, going G, A minor, so not even playing A minor 7, just a G and A minor, and then this part is really cool going. That is playing a right, the B minor, B flat minor, A minor, but he's playing it a B minor seven like this. Takes it off, so and then a B flat minor, then B flat minor seven. So he's he's playing that melody. So rather than just playing the chords <clears throat> as minor chords or minor seventh chords, he's mixing it up playing the very, very melodic and he's reversing, he's got this musical idea of this, then he goes, so he could go, and repeat the idea, but he reverses it, which is much, uh, much cooler, you know, really smooth, good, what they call voice leading, these specific voices, specific notes that you're playing are leading a, a particular directions, huh? Then we've got C minor right here. Then he goes, plays a C minor seventh. He throws it up here. Then just a G seven like this. Right there's just C major. Hammering onto a G seven and then same thing here as Dwayne, but he just throws in the little lead into it. You can think of that as more of a lead part. So again, there there's not like one is exactly the lead, one one's rhythm here. It's just a little bit back and forth. It's really, really knowing uh, the other person and really listening. You know, not just getting in your head space and doing your thing, but um, you know, listening to what is going on. So with that in mind, let's listen to Dwayne's um, approach to uh, soloing. I'm just gonna play one little example through, and then I'm gonna show you what's going on. And then we'll do the same thing for. And Dickie Betts approach.
the approach I want to show you here is to just play these notes right here. So it's not playing exactly, you know, the G blues scale, anything like that. It's a little bit mixture. So we have this right here, which is the sixth, a major sixth, which is actually from the G major pentatonic. The G, the root. The major second, the flat third, the fourth, and the fifth. And that is all you need. So he starts off the solo by going. And, and then kind of just this. So you just bend, a lot of bending around, and then it's 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 uh, you know, then he's bending up here. So sometimes he's bending to this note or this note, and coming back to this G a lot, right? One time he's going like like that. And I think, you know, it's a good thing to see if you can challenge yourself to just stick with these notes and work on bending here and here. And getting very precise bends, you know. But no, I shouldn't say oh, very precise. Sometimes, and then other times, just let it loose. That's where you get that tension where things are not uh, too, too precise and a, a little off. Or going really slow. Because it's a lot about tension and re release of this. But that's all I want to do for the Dwayne lead approach is just stick right there. We could look at, you know, different positions over here, up here, certain techniques, but just really focus on bending and just these notes, kind of that mix of the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic, and that is all you need. Focus more on practicing saying something and, and working in your phrasing versus just mastering the, the fretboard. So with that in mind though, let's check out uh, Dickie Betts' approach and see what he's doing. So for this, I'm just taking a little bit of the ideas when Dickie Betts just first starts his solo and sticking with just right here so we can have a contrast of different um, places. And again, this is not just a Dwayne or Dickie approach. You could just, it doesn't matter. You can you can mix and match both these, come up with your own thing. They're just showing you a little bit of the sound, a little bit of what's what's going on. We just want you to have some insight on what is going on with their playing. But he starts off up here. So we're going to just focus on just these notes. I'll show you as we go along why these exact notes, but we're just here in the third position, so it's like a um, G minor uh, pentatonic, but with some other notes added in here. So he starts off with. So this is that G minor pentatonic, right? But hammering onto the major third. That is the thing that a lot of players are missing when they're play, playing over, say, a blues and in other musical situations that. You know, you're playing over a chord that has a major note in there, this note right here, but just ripping, just ripping minor pentatonics, you know, the blues scale, and never hitting that note. That's going to help you connect to the chord more. And, um, you know, you don't have to always play it. Sometimes you want things to kind of butt against each other, but sometimes you want that in there too. So you see that sweet sound, he's doing both, just hammering into it. Seventh, and then and just kind of think, continuing down the scale a little more, jumping up there. And then I was just doing something like this, outlining the chord again, sliding to that major third up here. And this note right here, this is the major six. This is a big Home Brothers thing. Um, Dickie Betts especially would gravitate towards this note a lot. And sometimes just hitting it, sometimes. 
bending up to the flat seven. But this is another note just like this one, that major third, that gives you a sweeter, sweeter sound and is not in the, you know, just straight up minor pentatonic, so. And that is it, that's just the approach there. Just get, you know, these notes under your fingers and try to come up with uh, your own little melodies. You know, we could go off looking more at specific licks and things that they're doing, but my approach is to always just think about more musically what's going on, think about like a language and try to just get the approach and listen and then try to come up with your own melodies and ideas and techniques with it and you'll end up sounding more like yourself and you'll sound better a whole lot faster. And if you want to try this stuff out yourself, I have the backing track that everything you heard right over here and it's got the uh, just Dickie Betts' parts so you can try out all the soloing and stuff like Dwayne and uh, his little approaches with it as well. Have fun with it. See you in one of the next videos.